Taking on those Denver Broncos. Will the quarterback be in? Well, let's find out. What is up, Finn fans? Yes, today we're going to be talking about the Miami Dolphins taking on the Denver Broncos week 11. You might be asking yourself, Doug, this video comes out usually a little bit later than you make your releases on Friday. I was waiting for the Miami Dolphins to release their Friday you know, injury report. So we get the full-fledged injury report, and it's taking way too long, but I did find out some news, so I'm like, screw it. I'm going to record it. But before we jump into anything, Patreons, videos, anything, we have to talk about a, a Hall of Famer, M Super Bowl MVP that the Miami Dolphins lost a few days ago. Jake Scott, the original number 13. The safety for the Miami Dolphins, two-time Super Bowl uh, champion. Super Bowl MVP for that undefeated season. Nine years in the NFL, five-time Pro Bowler. He's going to be missed. He passed away at the age of 75. Like I said, the original number 13. You know, the one of the greats. Just to give you a perspective of how well he played, right? In that Super Bowl that the Miami Dolphins beat the Redskins. They were the Redskins at the time. And uh, the Dolphins went undefeated. He had two interceptions. He won Super Bowl MVP. Throughout the history of the Super Bowls, there has only been 10 defensive MVPs. And at the time of him winning that MVP, he was the second ever to win defense MVP for a Super Bowl. Uh, we did lose him. I think it was yesterday or the day before uh, at the age of 75. He will be missed. And our thoughts and prayers go out to his family. But I really wanted to talk about that because, again, the original number 13, one of the greats, needed to be talked about that he passed away. I do want to shout out two new patrons. Uh, we have Mitchell, $8 patron, and Tiffany, $4 patron. Thank you guys so much for joining the Patreon. Again, if you guys want to join, the link is below. I'm going to have a special video for you guys coming soon. Coming very soon. I have a few videos on there already. You can go check them out. It's, it's different. You don't see it here, special videos over there. So if you want to join the patron, the link is below. But let's jump into this, this discussion about the Denver Broncos. A lot of you guys, uh, one of you guys commented on my last video, hey, what ha you know, why haven't you had an opposing uh, YouTuber on? You know, for the Chargers, I didn't have one. Um, Cardinals, I tried to get one, but it just, it didn't pan out. AZ, if you guys don't know AZ. Uh, Cardinals fan. Uh, I tried to get him on. It's just our times didn't pan out. He was super busy. I was super busy. So for like the last two videos, I did not have an opposing uh, YouTuber on. And this one, unfortunately, I do not. I couldn't find a Denver Broncos YouTuber. Um, I tried to get Josh Houts on, but we had some tec technical difficulties. So I'm going to try to get him on for the deeper dive video coming out Monday. Should be really fun. Look forward to that. But let's talk about this. Let's talk about the injury report. Now, like I said, I was waiting to put this video out. I was holding off, holding off, holding off. I'm like, come on, release the Friday injury report. I'm going to check one more time while I'm recording this. I'm like, come on, release the Friday injury report so I can give the them the full-fledged Friday injury report with the who's playing, who's not playing, all that grasmataz. But no, they still haven't released it. And it is 2 o'clock. So let's jump into this. Looking at the injury report, we have some full participants in Brita, uh, Kavon Frazier, Byron Jones, uh, Shaq Lawson, Jamal Perry, Durham Smythe, um, Tua Tonga Vailoa. I will talk about that because... Jeez Louise. But Solomon Kinley and Kyle Van Noy were both limited. I'm hearing today from Brian Flores that Kyle Van Noy, hip... Solomon Kinley foot are questionable, but it does help that um, Jesse Davis can play all over the place. So the loss of Solomon Kinley won't be that big or bad. And you look at the Denver Broncos, they are completely banged up. Um, their inside linebacker, Joe Jones, did not practice. Their quarterback in um, Drew Locke was limited. We don't know if he's going to play or not. I think even though he will or not, I'll talk about what we could do with that stuff. But real quick. I want to talk about Tua Tonga Vailoa. Tua Tonga Vailoa pops up on the injury report with a foot injury, and everyone loses their mind. Tua's on the injury report. Oh my God, why is he on the injury report? Uh, and this was my response to Tua being on the injury report. All right. If you clip your, he 
if you clip your toenail the wrong way and you got an ingrown toenail, they're going to put you on the injury report. If you guys remember at the beginning of the season, he was on the injury report. This isn't the first time Tua was on the injury report. At the beginning of the season, he was on the injury report because he was getting treatment for his hip. Does it mean he was unhealthy and not will, not able to go? No, because he was on the sideline as the backup quarterback every game. He was getting treatment. There's a certain protocol to what has to be put on the injury report. So he's fine. Full practice, fine. If he wasn't fine, they wouldn't have made him available to talk to the media a few days ago like they did. The kid is fine. <laughs> How many times did we see Tom Brady on the injury report with some stupid thing that was on there with his wrist or his thumb or his his leg? Or He's fine, people. Relax. I understand that he has an injury history, and I'm putting quotes around it because none of the injuries besides the hip one were sustainable enough to keep him out of games. It's football. You're going to get dinged up, but he's fine. Take a deep breath, and we're going to move on. <laughs> he's fine. But I'm going to talk about the five things the Miami Dolphins need to do to beat the Denver Broncos. Now, jumping into, again, no specific order from important to least important. So I just want to get that out of the way. But jumping into it from, from jump, right? You look at the Denver Broncos, you look at the Miami Dolphins. They're going in two different trajectories. Miami Dolphins are super hot right now. Everyone's talking about the Miami Dolphins. To talk about Andrew Van Ginkle on Good Morning Football. They're talking about the Dolphins, Tua, the defense, all this great stuff. They're talking about Brian Flores. Fun fact, Brian Flores and Mike Tomlin are supposedly tied for coach of the year. Mike Tomlin has his team undefeated and Brian Flores has his team thriving. Both tied for coach of the year. If we have a way of voting for it, we should vote for it. But my number one is one game at a time, right? Brian Flores has pushed this. Brian, It's Brian Flores is, you know, mantra with this team one game at a time in today's praise pra praise conference i don't know what happened to my voice i got real sudden all of a sudden what was that in today's press conference brian flores was bothered that they weren't asking him questions about the denver broncos and he even talked about it he said denver's a good team denver's trying to win and that's why I'm saying one game at a time. That's what Brian Flores talks about. That's what I'm talking about. You know, a lot of you guys ask me questions about the draft. You know, I like to talk about it. I'll throw things out here and there. Like today, um, they had uh, a mock draft and the Dolphins taking Pierce in the middle linebacker. And I was like, I'd like that because you guys know I'd like to add a middle linebacker. But one game at a time. We're on Denver. And when Wednesday comes, then I talk about next week. And I'm not even talking about the draft. I'm not even because we don't even know where we're picking. We don't even know all that stuff. But you take one game at a time. Do not look past Denver. Do not like look past the Jets. Do not look past any of these teams towards that big shiny game against the Kansas City Chiefs. Because that is the big game that everyone wants to talk about. Hey, we got these next three games. If we could talk about the Chiefs, let's go to the Chiefs. Chiefs, Chiefs, Chiefs. So Focus one game at a time. So that's where we're at now. Don't look past the Denver Broncos. Brian Flores is not looking past the Denver Broncos. The number three thing, the Miami Dolphins, two. Why did I jump to three? What's wrong with me today? <laughs> the number two thing that the Miami Dolphins need to do to beat the Denver Broncos, run the ball. We were so close to getting Ahmed to 100 yards. You know, it was the last drive. We were trying to run the clock out. He got tackled for a loss a few times. He was at 90, and then he ended up being at, like, what, 83 or something when the day was over. Run the ball. The Denver Broncos have the 23rd-ranked run defense. Run the ball. Get them out there. You know, looking at the, the, the depth chart, you know, Matt Breida was a full participant. So let's get Breida in there. Let's get him doing his thing. Let's, let's get that development with that. Run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. If the Dolphins defense keeps playing the way it does, which I will talk about, give them a break and run the ball. Um, the number three thing, now we're on the number three thing, uh, for the Miami Dolphins to do to beat this Denver Broncos team. Now, Drew Locke is, he's a good quarterback. He's a decent quarterback. He had a horrible game last week throwing four interceptions. We don't know if he's going to go. He's back up. Eh. The Dolphins defense loves to throw this amalgamation at him. If you guys don't know, against the Chargers at some point when they start running the ball like crazy and march down the field on us, that's because they didn't want Herbert to make a mistake because he could not read or figure out the Dolphins defense. 
So same could go for Denver. So my number three is you need to stop Melvin Gordon. Melvin Gordon is probably going to be their most important part of trying to beat this Dolphin team is to consistently keep running the ball because Drew Locke or whoever the quarterback is probably going to start to get confused by the type of defense we're going to be running. So we need to stop the run. The number four thing the Miami Dolphins need to do, and this one, I'm, I, I just, I, I, for some reason, cannot not have it on the list. It's no mistakes. If you guys remember last week, we could have went up 21 nothing. We had that fumble that just like, ugh, and then all of a sudden it was 17, and then it was 14-17. It's like it would have been a completely different sway of momentum and all that stuff. So as much as we dominate certain games, the mistakes will bring the team, uh, will give the uh, the opposing team a chance to come back. And I don't want that. I want to continue to be this dominant team that we're building to be. So no mistakes. And the number five thing that the Miami Dolphins need to do, and like I keep talking about, continue the defensive dominance. Continue getting turnovers. 15 consecutive games the Miami Dolphins defense has caused a turnover. We've only played 10 games. 10? 9. Because we're playing our 10th game today, uh, Sunday. We've only played nine games. So where's the other six? Continuing into last season. 15 straight games causing a turnover. This Dolphin defense is playing a dominant defense. They do play bend, not break. And they, they give us the turnovers when we need them. And they give us the stops when we need them. But sometimes, you know... You, They let the team move in between the 20s, but then they shut it down. Continue playing that dominant defense, especially against an inferior team of the Denver Broncos. I guess I'm saying it. The Denver Broncos are not as good as the Miami Dolphins. It's just a fact. So don't let them come back into the game. Don't let them have any chance to continue that dominant defense. So what do I think is going to happen with this Dolphins game? What do I think is going to happen? Well, Like I said, Brian Flores is a coach that isn't going to be looking past this Denver Broncos team. He isn't going to be looking past the Jets. He isn't going to be looking past the Bengals. He isn't going to be looking forward to the Kansas City Chiefs game. And after that, he won't be looking forward to the Buffalo Bills game. Those are the two important games towards the end of the season. And even the Raiders game. Because they're ahead of us in the wild card right now. So, looking at all of this, I think the Dolphins should win. Dolphins should win. I'm, and this is probably going to be the biggest point differential that I'm going to pick, but the Dolphins should win by 10. I normally give it three, you know, against Seattle, I gave it three, Denver, you know, 49ers, I think I gave it seven. I think the Dolphins are going to win like 28 to 14, 28 to 16. I think it's going to be a big decisive win. Um, Everything is lined up for the Dolphins to continue their success, continue to play well, continue to do what they need to do. Like I said, just don't look fo- don't look past this team. Take this team seriously. You're going into their stadium. You're going up to Denver, a mile high. The atmosphere is different. The, the 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 it's all there's all these intangibles. So don't take advantage of it. But with Brian Flores and our new head coach, it's very important, and he he, he takes it into being very important that you take each game seriously. And I know a lot of you guys are going to be asking about Christian Wilkins. What's up with him? I know nothing. As I'm sitting here uh, making this video, I know nothing of Christian Wilkins, whether he is available or not. So with that being said, I'm assuming he is still on the COVID list, which means he won't be available for the game. So, Zyler, with your new contract, Raekwon Davis, continue to step up. Um, Benito Jones, all these guys need to continue to step up, make the stops, and um, take over for Christian Wilkins probably not going to be playing on Sunday. But be sure to comment below. Let me know what you guys think. What are the five things that you think the Dolphins need to do to beat this Denver Broncos team? If you're a Broncos fan, what do you think the the Denver Broncos need to do to beat the Miami Dolphins? Give me your score predictions, and I'm going to get you guys comment of the day. This comment comes from Mike, and Mike says, comment of the day, do you expect the coaching staff to be the same next year? This is a very intriguing question. When I saw it, I went, all right, Mike, I see you. It's very intriguing. Um, I think the defensive, uh, I think, yeah, honestly, I think it'll still be together. I the, the way they're playing and how well they're playing, I don't see them changing. The only thing I could possibly see if is Chan Gailey's like, ah, okay, I'm done. We installed an offense for you guys. I'm going to go and retire. I'm done. Yada, yada. But I honestly think that, yeah, next year it's probably going to be the same coaching staff um, because they're playing really well together. They're coaching really well together. They have that camaraderie and that team success so i don't see the coaching staff changing um but like i said if anyone it'd probably be chan Gailey being like all right 
I did what I had to do. You have your offense. I'm going to go retire now. But I, th I think that's going to be like maybe another year or so. But Mike, thank you so much for the, the comment. Like I said, guys, I will be live with my father watching the Denver Broncos take on the Miami Dolphins. I, there will be a baby shower going on downstairs. Me and my father will be up here in the studio live streaming. So be sure to come hang out on Sunday with me and my father watching the Dolphins take on the Broncos. But other than that, be sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. I got a ton, a ton of stuff that I tweet out there first. They have that new flea thing. So I make little short videos on there as well. So be sure to go check me out on Twitter and Instagram. Fanaticsnetwork.com is the website. They also have their YouTube channel, Fanatic, Fanatics Network. They have Perfectsville over there. They have Zavok over there. They have their own podcast. They have a ton of great Dolphin content over there. So be sure to go over and check it out. Fan to Fan Network is another site that I'm a part of with other NFL YouTubers. I am the Miami Dolphin Ambassador, so be sure to check that out. We also live stream before the games at 11 o'clock every Sunday, so be sure to check them out on YouTube, fan to fan Network, and Twitch.tv slash fan to fan Network. Other than that, guys, I will see you on Sunday. 4 o'clock? 4 or 5, I think the game starts, but I'll be live at 4 with my father. But other than that, guys, like usual, stay classy. Fins up.